I am James A. Lofts. I left the big city to build an off-grid homestead on 40 acres of Canadian wilderness. This area of Ontario has giant ridgelines, deep valleys, and pure rivers. Black bears, gray wolves, mountain lions, moose, and many forest spirits share the land. I started in November 2023. Starting with a modest 12 by 16 foot guest cabin, my goal is to build such a glorious homestead that I attract a magnificent wife, have 10 babies, and raise an Irish wolfhound. Welcome to Wild Homestead. After just two days of above zero temperatures, it was starting to get, it's a little bit of a low spot here. So it should be getting an absolute wet disaster as I come into the tent and just tracking an enormous amount of mud into the tent. So I think that this, I might even extend it. I might even get a few more bags and just extend it out to here. This is kind of where it starts to drop off, but I think that's a good start. And then, you know, after I take the tent down, after the cabin is up, I can always shovel this gravel out and use it somewhere else.
I just heard the craziest thing on Huberman Lab, you know, Andrew Huberman, this neuroscientist guy, about like taking afternoon naps. Apparently the ideal thing, if you're tired, is to do either a 20 minute nap, which recharges your brain, but it doesn't get you fully into the REM cycle, or do an hour and a half, because an hour and a half is a full REM cycle. Um, so if you do say, if you sleep for 45 minutes in an afternoon nap, you're gonna get halfway into your REM cycle, and when you wake up, you're gonna be super groggy. So that's really interesting, 20 minutes or an hour and a half. He also talked about how, if you look at people who have a habit of taking an afternoon nap, you know, 20 minutes or an hour and a half, they have lower incident rates of like Alzheimer's and dementia, you know, Parkinson's, a lot of different neurodegenerative uh, diseases of the brain later on in life. And you know, it's, I, I don't know if it's causative or cor cor correlative, but um, I think that's interesting, you know, so I'm gonna try, you know, today it's about one o'clock, I know what I'll call this. I'll call it a mid-afternoon mid afternoon nap. A man. What are you doing this afternoon? I'm taking a man in my tent. Huge shout out to my subscribers. As usual, got some great hot tips after the last uh, episode. One of which is you didn't spray behind the ledger board um, with uh, insulation. And when I say spray, that's because at this stage, right, once I get the roof up and the rafters up for the chinking material, I'm not gonna use a permanent chinking material right to start because it'd be a waste because I'd need to w let the log shrink. The next fall, at that point, I'll go in and do the permanent chinking. But for the next, you know, call it three quarters of a year, I'm gonna use spray foam. Spray foam because it's fast and because it's cheap. Um, and yeah, I think that's the best solution. It's not super elegant, but it's the most rational thing to do for chinking at this stage for those reasons.
Well, that's not good. Look at that. Holy shiznit. Maybe I shouldn't have taken that bracing off. I better put that back on. Booga. Just came back from an early morning haul at uh, Home Depot. Pencils for measuring things. I got two of these air masks because even doing the little bit of spray foam insulation yesterday, and I felt super nauseous. By the time I got 75% done that one side and I got back into my tent, even with the heavy wind, um, I felt nauseous and I had a killer headache, man. It just came on real quick and I could smell the fumes from the foam. And it says on the back, it's like, if you're not in a well-ventilated area, you should wear safety masks. You know, the spray foam, it's like, for sure, that stuff's full of all these different kind of nasty chemicals. Now, my ledger boards, which are behind here up on the wall, um, I basically, this is going to be, might be my last access to that point of the, of the uh, my walls. So I kind of got to insulate it now. Um, there's not going to be another chance to do it. But I'm having serious second thoughts. Like, I was just going to spray foam the rest of the cabin. Uh, you know, until next fall, let it uh, dry and settle and then use my permanent chinking. But now I'm thinking like, man, the off-gassing, the weird chemicals in the spray foam, I don't know if I even want to live in there for six months with the spray foam. So we're going to have to, uh, you know, cross that bridge when we get there and see what the alternatives are. But I am not impressed with that spray foam so far. If anybody knows any like um, non-toxic alternatives to spray foam, please let me know in the comments. There we go. Thankfully, there's a bit of a gap that I could actually fill in that one from the outside. So um, I think the three hour trip into town was worth it because no headache like I was having yesterday. I couldn't smell any fumes. So this thing was working in 95 mask and the goggles. So let's keep going. I took out both the ledger lock screws that I had tacked in just to hold this ledger in place on the bottom log. Got a great email, um, or was it a comment from, I think, a fellow who is a carpenter in Australia. And he pointed out, he's like, listen, if your structure is going to you know, shrink and compress like you believe it's going to, that 
if you bolt in plainly on the bottom log and the top log, what's going to happen is that log is going to flex out and might crack. So these are two seven inch diameter logs. That's about a foot. So we're, we should get about a half inch of compression and shrinkage per foot of wall height. So right there between those two logs, you should get about a half inch, which is not too much. But if this is super, you know, tightly screwed and bolted in, that ledger board could crack. What I think I'm doing, I'm just not going to bolt down on the bottom. I'm going to bolt and screw all along the top, like was my original plan. And then after about a year of drying and shrinkage, I'll go in and see where it's ended up and then tap in and drill in there. Timber lock. Oh crap. Ledger lock. Hello. Perfect length, no longer sticking through the other side like those other timber lock screws were. Hell yeah. So technically speaking, I didn't need to put in these two half inch uh, galvanized bolts. I could have just used these uh, ledger lock screws, screw bolts, um, and still have been, you know, two code and it's very sturdy. I put in, I think, many more than I actually needed. Um, but just to be cautious, I put the two old style bolts in there, you know, that's, uh, that's held down with the hex uh, nuts. And uh, that way I will sleep sounder at night.
Yeah, this thing ain't going nowhere. First thing, my hammer, I think, is too small, said every man. Um, I, I think it's only about eight ounces. Uh, you know, I've seen framing hammers. I think I need to get a framing hammer at, uh, you know, the hardware store because I've seen framing hammers that are like 22 or 29 ounces. But, you know, that's really the first uh, nail, like, hammering that I've done. Well, I guess other than the spikes and the logs, that was hammering. But that was like, you know, two-handed with a mini sledge. It's a little bit different, but you know what? Compared to screwing... There, there's something very satisfying about nailing versus screwing. And obviously it's hard to undo it, right? Compared to a screw, but I don't know. I just kind of feel like my testosterone level rise every time I smack that nail with the hammer. Feels good. Smells like victory. Oh yeah, I need a hand with uh, Thor's oak over here because of this tree, this um, dead poplar that's kind of kind of menacing right behind. It's hard to tell, but it's leaning directly in the direction of Thor's red oak. So any arborists out there, if you Holy cow, full-on Vietnam War going on between two red squirrels up, up in the trees. Jeez Louise, keep it down, guys. Uh, but yeah, any, any tips on how to fell this? Um, it's even got a snag up there. Any arborists, let me know what uh, kind of kit you would use to fall this, um, to fall this poplar. Because we can't have them taking out the only freaking oak tree on my entire property. You know, got to preserve Thor's red. Plus, the thunder god himself will strike me down if we do not preserve Thor's red oak. You know what, guys? For the rest of these floor joists, um, I was going to ratchet strap them into this sled and pull them. But the snow is quite wet today, and there's quite a bit of mud appearing as well. And I don't want to get these things super filthy and beat up so there's only i think there's 16 of these i'm just gonna take them two at a time also you know i'm gonna have to widen this trail for sure but if anyone has any recos on kind of trailers or systems 
that I can pull bigger lumber, even bigger logs, just, just you know, larger volumes of material with my ATV, please do let me know because I'm really not familiar with ATV accessories. This lumber, there's 14 boards here, that's sufficient to build this out to eight feet of floor loft. The loft is eventually gonna be 10 feet, 10 of 16. From my research, in terms of keeping heat evenly distributed in the cabin, um, having a loft that's kind of two thirds will somewhat prevent all of the heat from just rising and then the loft from being an oven and then the ground floor from being, you know, temperate or, or cooler. So the one beam I choose to do with the GoPro to get that cool advantage, it's a bit of a squirrely one. It bends, bends and twists over here, but on the far side, it looks nice and straight and all the rest of them are actually turning out really nice. I got the crowns in the middle, so it arcs up and these are all 12 inches on center. So we've got five here. I'm gonna do one, two, three more. And then I'm gonna use that as the base to build the end gable. <laughs> to my ancestors in heaven, Elysium, and Valhalla, Ooga Booga.
Look at that, the last one. It turned out really nice. It's looking really flat, flat and even. On the other sides too, it's looking nice, man. Especially this last beam, looking tight. The only, look at this beam, very even. You see the, the two layers of wood laminated together. I screwed all of these beams together. The only two that there's a bit of a gap in terms of the vertical gap are these two. The rest of them are very nice and level, but even these guys, this is fine because I've laminated these. I've sunk five screws in there. So even if the uh, plywood is lying on top of this, it's still as strong as two beams because they're connected together. And then also obviously connected here at the end. And a few of them, like this nail went squirrely, so I just jammed them in there. That's like a backup nail spot anyways the four main ones are right here really solid so i'm going to throw up the plywood and see what it feels like but totally forgot before I tack down the plywood I should really be putting these support beams this just ties all of these floor joists together makes it even stronger um so I think I'm going to be putting like three and then two and then three alternating right in terms of where their position is
Ball Sacks Coffee. Couldn't pick a better name. So I actually looked up, you know, on Wikipedia, who is this Balzac's character? And apparently he was like a romantic uh, French author from the 1800s. And he was amazing author, amazing work. But apparently he was famous because he drank 50 cups of coffee per day. What an absolute psychopath. But... I, I, I take back my statement that this is a terrible name for a coffee brand. That's actually an amazing name for a coffee brand. This beard is getting bushly. I woke up this morning and there was an owl with two little owl babies literally nesting in my beard. So I think on uh, the first day of spring, I'll, I'll completely shave it clean and see what I look like. But uh, back to the ledger board here. What I realized with these ledger lock screws is that thankfully the two bolts that I did put in here are right in the center of the top log. Because remember, as the logs shrink, they shrink towards the core. So even within a single log, I can't really have vertically spaced screws there. Do you know what I mean? Because a seven inch log will probably see a quarter inch of shrinkage. And then that means there's an eighth of an inch on the top shrinking down and an eighth of an inch on the bottom shrinking up towards the core. What I, I can only have ledger lock screws right in the center. So if you see like uh, here, this ledger lock screw is right in the center of that log. This one is above the center, this one's below. So I'm gonna have to come back and remove these two that are not right in the core. I can only have bolts and screws that are right in the core, the center of that top log. But I'm gonna finish constructing the floor and the ridge, and sorry, the, uh, the platform. I'm gonna build the gables and then I'm gonna come back and take out these screws because some of these logs I'm gonna have up here are like multiple hundreds of pounds. So I might as well leave them in while I'm building the gable, but come back and remove them so that there's no cracking up here. Ah, ladies and gentlemen, there we have it. We have all the cross braces underneath the floor. Looking good. I think this should be pretty darn stable, <laughs> how this is. Like, uh, and then again, like the last two beams I'm gonna install, cause I didn't get, I originally only got wood and then some surplus for doing uh, single beams, right? 16 inches on center. I ended up doing double beams, 12 inches on center. So thank God I ordered more than I needed. Um, but, uh, my next big wood order, probably for the roof, 
I will get uh, the ones to do the remaining two. And again, with this loft, um, because this is two thirds the length of the cabin, hopefully I will avoid the situation which my good buddy Adam Ruzzo and basically you know one of my cabin building mentors who did this about five years ago here in Ontario, his sleeping loft was maybe 20%. He had a very long cabin, 22 feet long. I think his loft was only 10 feet long and he had a big problem with the loft getting too hot and the main floor being too cold. So he actually ended up switching his sleeping loft into a pure storage space and sleeping on the ground. But I want to avoid that. So I can always come out you know, to 10, 10 out of 16 feet. Hopefully that'll be uh, sufficient. Holy cow, that is sturdy, man. Houston, we have liftoff. Loft floor. Check it out. Super sturdy. No wobble in it. No creaking. No movement at all. Even when I jump up and down on this thing. And uh, it's just super sturdy, man. These um, double uh, joists, two by six joists, I think really worked out. I'm glad I did them uh, 12 inches on center instead of 16. Literally cannot believe this. Like this is where I'm going to be sleeping, man. This is absolutely nuts. I can jump up and down on it, and it, it doesn't move. It's really, really sturdy. I was just back in the bush. I just cut uh, two more trees to start building the gables, which is what we're going to be doing next. And um, I'm going to have to order tomorrow the rafters for delivery and uh, the insulation. So that's super exciting because once this gable, we got to build this gable next week and um, get the ridge beam up and then start putting these rafters up, man. And the insulation, how cool is that? It's getting cold, it's gonna get cold again tonight. It was a warm day though. Got the first report from a neighbor, and this was confirmed in the local news as well. There's a few bears coming out of hibernation. It's super early. Everything this year is about six weeks ahead of where it usually is because of the El Nino winter. And boy, oh boy, that's another reason I gotta get this cabin done got to get my food locked up like I don't want to have to create an outdoor kitchen somewhere far away right as I'm finishing this cabin but there's a huge number of bears in this area the first two times I camped out on this property bears came up to me right up to my tent absolutely scared the bejesus out of me so I got to be carrying my bear spray at all times this is going to be amazing so thanks for following along on the ride guys I can't tell you how much I appreciate it and uh We'll see you next week on Wild Homestead.